How's it going, guys? It is 4.06 a.m. Thursday, July 14th here in Japan, and we have a medium difficulty question for endocrine. A nearly identical one shows up one of the offline 2CK NBME forms, although obviously fair game for step one. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. One week after a partial esophagectomy for adenocarcinoma, a 64-year-old man cannot be weaned from a ventilator. Vitals are within normal limits. Chest is cleared auscultation. Serum T4 is normal. Serum T3 is low. Serum TSH is normal. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for these findings. Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, drug-induced thyroiditis. Wrong fucking answer. Obviously, this refers to amiodarone and lithium, two most important drugs that will cause this. This can be hypo or hyperthyroidism, but U.S. similarly likes to give it to you as hyperthyroidism. And the reason they do that is because the highest yield point Point is that uptake scan, the 131 iodine uptake scan into the thyroid gland is always low, even if the patient is hyperthyroid. So if they give this to you as hypothyroidism, obviously you're going to select decreased uptake. But what you need to know is that it's going to be increased T3, T4, decreased TSH, decreased uptake. Holy shit. If you have increased uptake, that sounds like graves. Or it can be toxic adenoma, okay, or toxic multinodular goiter for increased uptake. But uh, it's because we have inflammation of the thyroid gland with increased spacing between cells, thyroid hormones leaking out into the blood. So we actually have a suppressed thyroid gland. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, lymphocytic thyroiditis. Wrong answer. This refers to chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. It's another way of saying Hashimoto. I've seen them write on two CK forms, chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis. Okay. So if you biopsy the thyroid gland Hashimoto, obviously you're going to fucking see lymphocytes. They ask that, okay? It's important detail. Um, clearly, we'd have decreased T3, T4, increased TSH, which we don't have here. Buzzy findings such as weight gain, cold intolerance, brittle hair, uh, dry skin or doughy skin. They often admit those findings because they're too easy. You need to know other findings such as carpal tunnel syndrome, menstrual irregularities, dysthymia, depression. Uh, transaminitis, very high yield. I've seen that in 2CK form, sounds weird. So ALT, AST can be increased. Uh, increased creatine kinase, CK, hypothyroid myopathy, uh, bradycardia, as well as increased total cholesterol. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, euthyroid sick syndrome, aka sick euthyroid syndrome, is the correct answer. So you need to know that for whatever fucking reason, in states of acute stress, you can get decreased conversion of T4 to T3, where T4 is going to get shunted to an inactive substrate called reverse T3, okay? Little r T3. So we're going to have normal T4, normal TSH, low T3, increased little r T3 or reverse T3, okay? If you were to Google this slash wiki this, you'll see that there's many proposed mechanisms slash explanations for why this occurs, okay? But it's thought that cortisol also plays a role in shutting off peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. And T4 doesn't go up because it's shunted to reverse T3, okay? It's fucking weird. It's not my opinion. So you just need to know this. I also have it in my High Yield Arrows PDF. Normal T4, normal TSH, low T3, increased reverse T3. They can say patients being weaned from a ventilator. This is what's on the NBME, as I said. Uh, they can say uh, patient just has an illness of some kind. Okay, and it's just you thyroid six syndrome. So choice D, subacute thyroiditis. I'll just whip through these final answer choices. Subacute thyroiditis is another way of saying subacute granulomatous thyroiditis or de Quervain. And uh, similar to drug-induced thyroiditis, you're going to have decreased uptake even when you're hyper. Okay, so postpartum thyroiditis, drug-induced thyroiditis, and de Quervain or subacute, uh, always decreased uptake even when you're hyper. This is going to be viral infection followed by a tender slash painful thyroid. They don't have to mention the viral infection, okay? For uh, etiologies on 2CK that normally have a viral infection preceding, such as ITP as another high yield example, or toxic synovitis in pediatrics, they often won't even mention the viral infection. So just any tender slash painful thyroid is to Quervain. Wrong fucking answer. And sub subclinical hypothyroidism, wrong answer, just a distractor here. This is going to be a patient who has an increase, usually over the age of 50. Uh, it's going to be an increase TSH, but normal T3, T4, okay? And you don't treat it almost always. Uh, it's thought to be a precursor to Hashimoto, clearly. Uh, but 
for step three, you could be aware that you do treat it if the patient's pregnant, if you have a TSH greater than 10, normal range is 0.5 to 5, or if you have the presence of anti-Hashimoto antibodies, such as antimicrosomal, okay, thyroperoxidase, antithyroglobulin. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.